Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, today's sermon is called Centering the, the Pendulum. Let's pray. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will just permeate this atmosphere with your love and your spirit, God. Speak speak to every circumstance today, God. I pray that you will just um, just use me to to espouse your truth and your word. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will just permeate the atmosphere with your holy presence. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi guys. A few months ago, a situation happened to me, not to me, but it was, um, it was a situation that got me thinking about uh, how we've swung so far in the pendulum when it comes to uh, talking about heaven. See, when I was coming up, heaven was always talked about in like, we used to sing um, stuff like this world is not my home, heaven sounding sweeter all the time, and all that stuff. You, you got kind of like, um, kind of like, um, excuse me for saying this, but kind of tired of talking about heaven and you just wanted to not talk about heaven anymore but now we've kind of swung the other way that we don't we don't talk about heaven we don't talk about speaking in tongues we don't we don't talk about fasting or or some churches do it too much and today's sermon uh is about centering the, the pendulum um, about how we how if we talk about one thing it doesn't negate the necessity of the other thing so if we talk about uh, heaven it doesn't negate the necessity about talking about how to be successful in life or how to achieve God's purpose in your life and if you talk about how to achieve God's purpose in your life doesn't negate the necessity of talking about the hereafter and it doesn't diminish the significance of, of one versus the other. I think we're we we've become so afraid of certain topics because we think that oh I I don't want uh, or some pastors think I don't want people to to really think that they they can only find happiness in heaven so I'm not gonna, going to talk about that we're not even gonna dwell on that or I don't want people to think the only success they can find is on earth so I'm going to focus on the hereafter. I'm saying, I'm here to say that both are necessary and we don't need to be afraid of either heaven or earth. The Lord wants both for us. Um, the Lord wants us to be successful on earth, which means to me achieving and embracing and walking out his purpose for your life on earth. And then as, as a continuation, being with him in glory afterwards 
And you need not be afraid to address um, heaven or earth. I, th I think it's both are necessary. And I think that we need to not be afraid to talk about certain things. I know in certain churches, uh, they're afraid to even talk about the blood of Jesus and, and speaking in tongues. Listen, we do not need to be afraid of this stuff. We need to just uh, talk about it biblically and what the Lord says about it. And then we need to let God speak to people after we've shown them the word and then let him illuminate their hearts even more. And like, cause we're afraid of, of debate cause when it comes to the hot button issues like heaven, and speaking in tongues, you get a lot of different opinions. You get you get people talking about the third heaven, the second heaven, and you say you get a lot of people talking about is it necessary to speak in tongues to be saved and all that. You get some people saying no, and some people saying yes, and you get all kinds of debate. Um, a few years ago, um, I talked about speaking in tongues in a sermon of mine, because at that time, and even still now, uh, when I was teaching or preaching, the Lord would have me uh, break out into spontaneous tongues and I wanted to clarify what I was doing to people on YouTube. When I put up that video, that video got so many views and I nearly started a, I started a fight. So eventually I just came up and started, it started answering questions. But because um, there is debate and contention over an issue. It doesn't mean that we need to start to stop talking about it. And I was thinking of of this uh, too. I was thinking of uh, when you release something out into the world, whether it be uh, a sermon, or whether it be a song, whether it be a play, whether it be a word of encouragement to your neighbor, it is not and never has been your responsibility to 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 uh, measure how they take it in. So. For, for a preacher, just for a second. So, it is not, never has been my responsibility to measure how you are taking in what I'm saying. Um, never, to, like, um, some people stress about, oh, did they get my meaning or did they, did they take this in or oh they they took in the story I told and not the word um, not the scripture I did they so they left the scripture and took in the story that I told um, so I was thinking of this the other day and I was thinking of it's not my responsibility to measure as a preacher what you take in versus what you don't. My responsibility 
is to preach what God has given me and what you take into it is your responsibility. That's your job to siphon out and ask the Lord to illuminate your perspective or, you know, everything like that. I think we, we, we as humans, even if you're, I'm, I'm going to take this past pre preaching now. If you are encouraging someone like a friend or whatever, and you are saying something to a friend, it is not your responsibility to measure how that friend is receiving what you're taking in. As long as your words are clear and exactly what your meaning is, as long as you're conveying to the best of your ability the message, the rest of it is not your responsibility. Like, oh, is that person uh, going to take it well or it? And by whatever, that part is not your responsibility. As long as you're conveying uh, the message to the best of your ability, the rest of that is not your responsibility. Should we think about our words and the way we approach people? Absolutely. We should not intentionally hurt people or maim people or, you know, disrespect people with our words. But, but at the same token, we should not be afraid to speak out something that God has given us or some encouragement or some uh, rebuke that God has ordained us to give to that person. And make sure when it's a rebuke, number one, it comes from God and not from you. Number two, that you are ordained to speak into that person's life. And number three, Make sure that any review you give or any crit constructive criticism you give to a person is um, is uh, for their better for their betterment and spoken in love. Too many people have given criticism that it first of all was not from God. Second of all, was their own limited view and understanding. And third of all, it was not. They were ordained to speak into that person's life. And they swung all the way over to the uh, to one side of the pendulum or another. And and just have, their words have damaged a person. Many people right now, under the sound of my voice, are living under words that have damaged them from eight years old, from nine years old, and now they're 40-something, and still living under those words. Um... And the Lord wants to break that today. Those words that you heard when you were six years old, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, have no power over you anymore. And I pray, Lord God, that, that you will free people from damaging words today. And... Um, I think when we, the key to centering the pendulum 
is balance and balance will depend um mostly on the situation you're in so when you are um in church and you are doing a success uh, sermon how god wants you to be successful wants you to follow his purpose or whatever that is not the time to be talking about heaven oh we're going to go to glory and all that stuff that is not the time or the place to be talking about that you were talking about how to be successful on earth but but when you are talking um to that to a friend and they told you that their that their loved one who was in Christ just died and you, and you want to share a scripture about heaven and the and the streets of gold and glory go ahead it it is still true Jesus is still coming back. He he is still going to prepare a place for us, and we ne and we need not be afraid of of addressing that or talking about that. But the issue I think with most people is when you over talk about one one aspect of life or the next it's it's like when you are constantly talking about heaven when you are constantly singing about heaven it gives people this ethereal vision of it and it was like oh I can't wait to die so I go to heaven or when I die hallelujah by and by it's just or by and by when the morning comes. When you are overly saturating your sermons, your songs, your, you know, your whole congregation with heaven, it gets kind of, well, it causes people to ask the question to, to not, not outwardly long for death. They're like, oh, this way is so hard. Let's just die and I'm coming up the rough side of the mountain. It just gives a oppressive and depressive spirit to the whole thing. Whereas the Lord wa wanted us to have a glorious view of, of glory, not not as an escape, but as a final resting place. He didn't want us to uh, can't wait to die. He wanted us to know that when we did, there is a final resting place that he's preparing for us. But while we are waiting for that final resting place in his time, we can feel free to enjoy our lives. We can feel free to have joy, uh, to have uh, moments of happiness and freedom. And we can feel free to do that. And, and it's, it, it's all. He's working it off, all for good. And somebody said, well, it's all good. And, and in reality, most of the time, it isn't all good. But he works everything for our good on earth as it is in heaven. So I think earth is meant to be, no. Heaven is meant to be a, 
a continuation or a, a eternal resting place. It's not a place where you wait to go because the world is hard. It's a place that, that the Lord has prepared for us when we go a place of rest. But saying that, it doesn't mean he doesn't want us to have rest. He doesn't want to have us to have peace. And we're only supposed to be toiling and waiting for heaven. No, he says, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly to the full until it overflows. He wants us right now to have overflowing life. And then when he chooses to take us to that final resting place, the life will continue. So it's, I think really, heaven is a continuation of earth. And I think what you do now will echo in eternity, like it says in Gladiator, what we do in time will echo in eternity. Like heaven is not not just, oh, I can be happy now. It's just a continuation of what we were experiencing on earth. So it's what we were experiencing on earth in another realm without all the toil and stress and strain. And I don't think we need to be afraid to talk about it. I don't think we need to be afraid to express it and talk about uh, death and all that. But at the same time, I know that I have so much to put out before the Lord takes me home. And I'm praying that that, that will be a long time from now. I pray that he'll give me a long life. Because I have so much to put out. So instead of waiting for heaven, why don't we put out everything now? Why don't we leave empty? And he, he's put so much in us now that it is absolutely phenomenal. And the late, great Miles Monroe said this. He said, the richest place is the cemetery. And when he was saying rich, he didn't mean monetarily. He meant with ideas, creativity, businesses, and all that stuff. He said, so whatever you have, put it out now. Whatever business idea you have, put it out now. Whatever creativity God has stirred up in you, whatever movies, whatever books, whatever inventions God has given you, put it out now. And some of you are saying, well, I'm 55, it's a bit too late. It's never too late. If God has given it to you, it's it's the appointed time to do it now. Don't sit on your vision. Don't sit on your dream. Write it down. Make it plain. Like, Hab like Habakkuk 3 says. To write the vision. And make it plain. Because when you codify something, when you write it down, it kind of sets it in motion. And don't worry about the resources. God will send the resources. For those of you 
who have been toiling with no result. God says the results are coming. For those of you who have struggled with loneliness, low self-esteem, all that stuff, he said, your crew is coming. Though, for those of you who have been crying at night and just wondering for years, when will this end? When will it end? And he's gonna, he said, the end is near. Not death. The end of this trial will um, will come. And he's saying, before the ending of this trial, look for the lessons. Because like I always say, in every trial, there are lessons. There are certain things that God wants you to take away. God, I don't believe that God causes trouble. I believe God uses trouble to teach us something. So, instead of wondering and waiting when this trouble is going to be over, I'm waiting for the sweet by and by, I'm waiting to die. Ask a more intelligent question. Ask God, what are you trying to teach me about you and about myself through this trouble? Because, um, and let me tell you something, trouble won't last always, neither will the happy times. Life is a roller coaster, and you are either coming from a problem, about to go in a problem, or in smack dab in a problem. And in all of that, there are lessons. And even in the happy times, there are lessons, but they're not as easy as readily learned as in the sad times. There is something about the, the trying times of life that will that will teach us things. That 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 the uh, joyful times of our lives won't. So ask the Lord, what is the lesson that you're supposed to teach me in this issue? And for you pastors who are having a hard time, go uh, cent centering the pendulum. You talk too much about heaven or or not, or not enough, ask the Lord, what is the balance for my church? How do I approach this when it comes to my congregation? I want to discuss this issue, but I don't know how, or I want to bring forth the issue of heaven, but I don't know how, or it could be I want to bring forth the issue of finances because we're always praying for finances, but I don't know how, you know. And that goes if you're leading any kind of church. Um, that goes for any issue, like, because, you know, there are so many issues, and I believe for some pastors, they they are seeing issues every day that they want to address, but they don't know how to address them. And sometimes it may not be you that is called to address them. Sometimes it may be someone in your congregation, or sometimes it may be an, an idea that someone in your congregation has to address that issue. So ask the Lord and he will open up your understanding. And don't be afraid, pastors, to go to him with 
anything, any, like, because sometimes even as a leader, you see a lot of issues, you are like, I want to address that, but I, I don't know how to, I feel ill-equipped to address it. But the more you feel ill-equipped, the more he'll equip you. <laughs> so, so just, and it might be, and you might open up, um, he, he might open up a way for you to address whatever issue that, that the world has never seen before, like through a live chat or, or, or something else. And an another thing about pastors, for pastors, sorry, use, sorry for anyone else who's listening to this, but use the wealth of those around you. For pastors, use the wealth to be a congregation. For others who are not pastors, use the wealth of your family and friends. When I say wealth, I don't mean money. I mean wisdom. I mean knowledge. And ask, ask the Lord, who is wealthy when it comes to this issue? Who could help me um, address this issue with my congregation? Or who, or who have you put in my life? Uh, that has wisdom or connections to somebody with wisdom to help with that situation. Wisdom is there. It just needs to be gleaned. And sometimes we, we don't have wisdom, number one, because we don't ask. Number two, because we don't, uh, we don't glean for it. Sometimes we're not called to have that kind of wisdom, but there are people around us, our Facebook friends, our work friends, that do have that kind of wisdom and that they are designed to help us. But we don't know because we don't ask. So, thank you guys for joining me today. I, I really appreciate it. And I, I hope this sermon helped you to balance the, pe the pendulum, to, talk, to know it's okay to wait for heaven, talk about heaven, occasionally sing about heaven, and to talk about earth and how to uh, live God's purpose up, up on earth. Um, we need both um, to have uh, to uh, experience the full life that God has for us. And I think that both are necessary. And I pray that you, you will walk in the security that God has called you, whether you're a single mom or whether you're a pastor, whether you're uh, a teen at home. I pray God's blessing for you. I pray that he be with you where you come, when you come and when you go. I, I declare that you're the head and not the tail. I declare that resources and divine strategy are coming to you. I declare that the peace of God will silence every errant thought, will, will silence every demonic thought. Every thought that you've been struggling with, I declare that the Spirit of God will capture it and dispel it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done and what you're about to do. And I pray, Lord God, that the gift of God, that is eternal life, will dwell in all our hearts. In the name of Jesus. Let us feel you supernaturally this week. 
Lord God. Let us experience you like never before. Let us be aware of you this week in our coming in and our going out. Lord God, I praise you. And I I just want to thank you, Lord, for everything you've done and what you're about to do and what you are already doing because we know that all things in our lives are working together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. In the name of Jesus, amen. We love you and we give you the praise. Amen. So guys, I want to say thank you for just hanging with me and and listening to my sermons every week. L listening to the sermons that God has given me every week. See you next week. Bye.